On this episode of Redefine, I speak with Joy Bianchi Brown, the marketing and business brain trust behind the successful boutique photography studio, Jules Bianchi Photography. And she shares some phenomenal ideas on how to create profit from the work you love. Adorama TV presents The Redefine Show with Tamara Lackey, where she talks with creatives who make it all work, bringing their best creative and business tips to you, along with fresh ideas and equipment favorites. You can check out much more content with photographers, filmmakers, and entrepreneurs by watching Adorama TV. Hi, Joy. Thanks for joining us. Um, I wanted to have you on today because you are the business side of uh, you and your sister, your twin sister, run Jules Bianchi Photography. And you are the, uh, is, it just, is it Jules Bianchi Photography exactly? Yeah. Yep. And um, as well as Jules Cafe. So um, you are the side of the business that keeps things structured and moving and brings in clientele and works campaigns and all that sort of stuff. And I wanted to pick your brain a little bit about ideas you had as it relates to marketing and getting your name out there and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, so my first question is, if someone's just getting started today and saying, you know, I really want to grow my business and get clients who will pay for my work, um, what suggestions would you have for someone today? Okay, um, actually, it's a really good question, and I and we has had a similar experience. Jules had her business based in Los Angeles for a number of years, and recently moved up to the Bay Area. So her clients were shifting. We needed to create a name for her up in the Bay Area. Right. Um, and the first thing I would say to do is to become the go-to photographer in your community. So you don't have to be the best photographer out there. You just need to be the one that people know. Yeah. <laughs> so that and so to start doing that, um, a lot of people think that they have to create their website and get on Facebook and start doing that. And I think that that is valid. And there's a lot of, of validity to the social networking. But I think also like human networking is really critical. The other critical piece is that is they have to like you because uh -huh. people want to work with people that they like. I yes. mean, ultimately, business is a human enterprise. When Jules was working on her own, mm -hmm. she actually it was a very lonely for her. She did a lot of work. In her, in her house, she ran the business out of her house, she was doing all the marketing and branding and post-processing alone, and so it, she didn't take the time to get out there and get to know people. Right. Um, so even- Which is a very easy trap to get into. And it's hard because you're selling yourself. Yeah. So sometimes it's, it, you're self-conscious or you don't want to be, promote yourself, and I think it's, you, you need to get out of that mode, but there's a lot of ways that you can soft sell yourself, your product, without having to say, hi, I'm a photographer. I mean, so what you can do in starting to get involved in your community, and, and this doesn't require having a studio per se. So right. say you have a, an area that you want a blanket, that you want to be the go-to photographer like for a, that Like a area. set neighborhood, that, that that's what you yes, want, like, that community, I want this okay. neighborhood. So then you, how do you get involved in that neighborhood? There's lots of ways to get involved in the community that are free. So. You could, for example, you could join Rotary. You could get involved with the community. There's, um, I was in a civic action commission with the city that I live in, where we provided entertainment during the summer, like concerts in the park. Ah. But, but through that, I got to know people that worked for the city. I got to know other business people who were involved in that committee as well. Right. So whenever they needed a photographer for anything, they're like, oh, I know somebody. Right. So they would call me. Now say I don't do that kind of photography, right? They're having concerts in the park and they want me to come and shoot the band. I'm not gonna say, well, I don't, I don't shoot bands, sorry, that's not what I do. Because what you wanna do is become a resource for people. And maybe you're shooting the band as a favor to the commission that you're working for, and then your work is out there. And the next time someone needs a photographer for what you do, you can, you, they'll think of you. Yeah. So, so I think that being generous with your time and with your talent is only gonna help you, only gonna propel you forward. And so if you can say yes to more things, get to know more people, and, and the more you do, the more uh, chances you're gonna have to be known. And Yeah, and I think what's really interesting about that is uh, there's the, the feeling out there that you know if you're generalizing and everything that you're good at nothing you've got to get focused and you've got to get specialized and and to an extent I absolutely agree with that however my first few years in business I shot everything I joked that I was a land photographer because if it was on land I was shooting it I didn't really do aerial or underwater nice. but everything else I shot and, um, and I don't think I would have been able to get so specialized in uh, the type of work I do now in terms of portraits if I hadn't had enough of a base of clientele to be able to say, okay, I am no longer shooting weddings, I am no longer shooting, you know, and really start narrowing it down. So, so let's use pets, for example. My sister is huge 
dog person. If anyone knows Jules, they know Olive, and yeah. she's had this dog for years. It's her furry baby. So she wanted to move into more pet portraiture. So the way to do that is to start getting involved with people who have dogs, have pets. That So for example, you could volunteer for the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. But the other thing you can do is to get to know people who own, like a groomer, for example, or a, one of those little boutique doggy stores, little fancy... Fido. Yeah, those kind of stores. So And and work with those people to actually promote an event together. So this is my my other big advice, is, yeah. is um, partnership. And so, and going in, not just calling them on the phone, but actually going in and meeting the owner of the groomer and, and getting to know them, maybe take them to lunch. So we're doing this human interaction thing. I'm just getting to know you. This, this human interaction yeah. thing. I love how you say it's like a program. Now pull up the human interaction app. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Is there an app for polite conversation? <laughs> so, and, and so the thing is, say you want to get to know this groomer because mm -hmm. people who pay to have their dogs groomed are more likely to pay to have their dogs photographed. Right, because there's a the, level of care there. Yes, and so, you, for. so you want those clients. And right. This groomer has that client list, right? right. So the, the, the thing is, is that you need to have a genuine interest in the other person. If you're just going in just to sell them, yeah. th people know that. Right. So you want to take them to lunch and get to know, well, why did you become a groomer? You obviously love dogs. I love dogs. Talk dog. You don't have to talk shop at all. And then... Um, talk dog. Talk dog. <laughs> You could do that. Woof. So, but the other, so then together you could partner on, for example, um, you could help your local dog shelter and raise money for them. So fundraisers. Yeah. Is it, so you're having this event, and now say you don't have a studio, have the event at the groomers. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can use the groomers client list to to um, promote this event that you're having t t for, as a fundraiser for dogs for this local shelter. So. Right. Now you have the shelter also promoting it for you. Yes. The groomer is promoting it for you. And then you're also promoting it to your clients because the best client is the one you already have. Right. It's like what, seven times, ten times harder to get a new client. So what, what this does, it creates a soft sell, a touch point for you to send an email or a mailer to a client to say, hey, I'm having this event. Mm -hmm. If you have a dog, why don't you come? You, it, you can contribute then to this, to this I want to say humane society, yeah, I know whatever, saying. the shelter. Yeah. So so then, is that another, and then your client thinks of you, oh, look at this, this sounds fun, I'll bring my dog. Or, oh yeah, I need to get my portraits done. Right. Glad she sent me this because I had lost her number. Yeah. So you're not even, you're not. Which happens more frequently than people it's so true. Re recognize. Like yeah. if you're not, because I've talked to people who say, well, I don't want to keep reaching out and being a pain. I'm like, they have to have a certain amount of contact from you before you become top of mind. Right. And there are absolutely times where they're just like, ah, like the resistant point isn't, I don't want to call her. It's like, I'd have to find the number and I don't really feel like it right now. And make it convenient. I think decisions is one of the hardest things that people have to do. It creates the most anxiety in people. So that, I know we're talking marketing, but when you're, no, when we go to, it. when you talk, Sales, yeah. that's the other thing you want to do is eliminate as many decisions as possible and right. you, you'll actually increase your sales with fewer decisions for your clients. Absolutely, so I agree. It has to, less, less products, you don't need a million products to yeah. offer. I mean, if you've ever gone to a restaurant and you open it and it's like a three page. Cheesecake factory. You're like, ah. Uh, and there's ads I, on everything. Oh, what I want to yeah. eat, too many things. Yeah. It's exactly the same. So, um, but there's lots of ways you can partner with other businesses for example, say you want to grow your children portraiture, you can partner with a boutique child, you know, clothing store. Mm -hmm. Go in, talk to that person, and figure out ways. To maybe they can, if the, a person reaches a certain price point in purchasing, they get a, a gift certificate to your studio as a as a thank you from the boutique clothing store. Right. And so, if you think of it as a marketing dollar, it's not a th you're not giving away money by giving the gift certificate so that the session is free it's, or It's introducing is half a new client to your business. Exactly. Yeah. Who, who spends a lot of money on their children's clothes? They're right. not at Sears. They're and see, what's interesting, I think, is that, um, and I've had, you know, certainly in communications with photographers, they'd say, well, you know, I went into the children's boutique and I tried to hang my photos on the wall, but they already worked with somebody else. And, and then I just kind of felt weird and that just didn't really work out. But, but I think one way to reframe that um, is to say, well, what can I offer you to give to your clients? And I'm not asking for anything back. Like, here's something you can give to them if you want. That doesn't mean have, your work has to be on the wall. It doesn't mean your work has to be in the doctor's office for you to have a gift that the doctor gives to new, new mothers, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes people kind of trip up on that logic. Well, if I'm not the whole person representing that boutique or that doctor's office or whatever, then I don't have an in. So you could do this with realtors. Yeah. If realtors who sell a home can give a gift certificate to their client as a closing gift, 
that to take a portrait in front of their new home. And so, and especially if it's a realtor who's selling million dollar homes or whatever the high end homes are in your area. So what kind of gear do you guys use for you? What's your basic kit? What's your setup? Well, we're Canon girls all the way and Jules is a big lover of lenses. So we have every lens imaginable. Um, of course, I think that this is one of the more popular lenses is a 50 1.2 yep. and of course I love it. Razor sharp, beautiful lens. But the, the go-to lens, tends to be the 100 mm -hmm. because it's a beautiful portrait lens, but it's also a great uh, macro. Yes. So when Jules is doing weddings, she can do portraits, and then she uh, she loves to do the rings and have a, yeah. kind of a creative like theme of the wedding and how, where can I fit the rings in this, and so she can use that. The other thing is that Jules is really big with off-camera lighting. We use the Canon Speedlight flash and the uh, and pocket wizards mm -hmm. to sync up with the cameras, and at receptions, you're obviously cameras are becoming more and more user friendly, more and more consumers are getting them. Yes. So, you know, you, you could, it's very possible you'll end up at a wedding and, the, you know, Uncle Joe has the exact same setup you have. Right. But what's going to differentiate you, other than your wide variety of lenses and your good eye, is um, the off camera lighting where it's synced up and you can use that off camera lighting any direction you want. So, if you want a backlight, you can position your body so that you're using it as a backlight mm -hmm. or use it as for fill flash. It just depends on where you go. And uh, that's been really fun to play with. Yeah. You know, especially with like first dance and all that kind of thing. And so um, I think a lot of people are really afraid of lighting. In I know. I think, I think that there's a, a perception out there that you have to know every single thing your flash does to be able to work with flash. And that's not true. Most of the time you have a couple setups that work for you and then you can start playing. Right. Um, all right. So tell everybody where they can find you. Okay, you can find me, Joy Bianchi Brown, which is hard to spell, B-I-A-N-C-H-I, -I, brown like the color, on Twitter, uh, and JulesCafe.com or JulesBianchi.com. All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time. This was really helpful. I think a lot of people are going to get a ton out of this, so Good. thank you very I'm much. Glad. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.